Good morning. Welcome back to the Transport Bandits channel. Good morning. We are sitting at the Lumi Bay Travel Plaza in Bellingham, Washington. What a big surprise. It's, it's raining. It's raining in Washington State on the coast. Today, we are going to deliver my unit, which is sitting right next to me, this big uh, Class C motorhome. I am delivering that to Delta, British Columbia, which is the ferry port to Vancouver Island. And then she'll hop in the truck with me and we'll take this one over to the island. Yep, we'll take the ferry over to Vancouver Island and then drive an hour and a half to Comox, British Columbia and deliver his unit where he's going to get a $300 bonus for being an excellent driver. <laughs> and then we'll drop it off and we'll go back down to Pendleton. Pick up another one, take it back to the same guy, drop it off. Go get another $300 bonus. Go back down to Pendleton, pick up another one, take it right back to the same guy. So we're doing three trips to Vancouver Island in six days. As part of our delivery to of my unit, where we will make $10,003, yep. uh, hopefully within about nine days. So. Come. You out there watching, subscribe. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to press that like button. And if you're applying for Synergy, put us down for a referral and we'll give you a free consult. We'll give you a free consult. Normally we charge $399 for that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. We'll give you a free one if you're signed up for Synergy. We'll give you a free one anyway. Just give us a call. <laughs> All right, let's go in the rain. We're going to cross the border here in about 15 miles at uh, Blaine, Washington. Got all of our, our border papers together. All you need is your Canadian manifest from your company, your passports, and the, fill out that ArriveCan app. If you haven't uh, filled out your ArriveCan app and you're taking a load to Canada, Go check out my video on how to fill out that Arrive Can app. Let's go to Lane, Washington at the border, and then let's go get that thing delivered. And Here's what we'll it looks hop like. on the ferry and deliver them. Okay, I'm in my Class C motorhome. It's a Ford F-350 Class C um, Thor motor coach. Uh, this is the back side of it. You can see back there. I never go back there except that that bathroom door keeps flapping open so and I can't tape it shut because it's too heavy and won't hold tape when you come to a stop so that's irritating and as you've seen on a previous video on the way out here I had the flat tire check out that video what do you do if you have a flat tire on a motorhome that doesn't have a spare check that video out but right now we're getting ready to head out of Lumi Bay and head it to the border let's go was really easy since we crossed so many times that comes up when they type your passport number in um, that brings up that arrive can app that shows your vaccination status I just have to show them my passport and my manifest from the company and Jeff is right behind me and he's doing the same thing I'm just waiting on him to get through the border Jeff is parked right there. He's going to pick me up and I'm going to be back in the truck with Jeff after three and a half days from Goshen. You don't want to forget your placards and your 
rear plates, make sure you remember to take that off of your unit before leaving the lot. And it's that easy. I've got back into the truck with Jeff for the rest of the next six or seven days. And we are headed to the BC Ferry Port to Vancouver Island. Oh, by the way, before you deliver that motorhome, if you're doing a motorhome drive away, make sure everything that belongs to you is off or out of that motorhome, and then you'll come away with three items. Your delivery acceptance form, your manifest, which is stamped at the border, and your BOL. That's what the three thing, pieces of paper you need. Don't forget to get your tag. Tags and placards, everything is clean on the inside of the motorhome. Nothing is left there that belongs to you. All right, let's head to the ferry over this big bridge. We will be taking the Nanaimo Ferry. That's the more northerly port on Vancouver Island. The Victoria Ferry goes to the more south or to Victoria, Vancouver Island. want to be in the second to the right lane that's going to Nanaimo. This yeah. one's going to Victoria. Right now we do. That could change at any minute though. Wait and see what these signs say. It told us to be in that lane over there, but these are going to Victoria. We have to go all the way over here to Nanaimo. And you are a commercial driver, so make sure you tell them that when you get to the gate. We are in lane 24. She will tell you a lane number. Oh, sorry about that. And we will travel down here. In fact, they have a sailing now. They have a sailing every two hours. And the one going to Nanaimo is leaving at 10.15. They are boarding now. So we are fortunate that we are going to be able to catch this ferry in just a few minutes. Maybe. You will be reimbursed for your ferry ticket. You have to pay out of pocket for the, uh, the ferry to Vancouver Island. That cost uh, $314.25. That's Canadian, so you have to convert that back to US. But on your BOL, you, we have a toll cap of $790. We will be reimbursed for our trip over and our trip back. Now, if we had had to wait like two hours to board the ferry, we could have gone right over here. Okay, this is a whole marketplace where you can get something to eat, drink, go to the bathroom, there's shops in there, you can buy souvenirs, whatever. But we don't have time for that because we are loading right now. All right, let's get on the ferry. Hello, seagulls. These are Canadian seagulls. They speak the same language. They do not. They speak the King's English. We're getting on the Queen of Albieri. We're going to load in right behind these guys. As you can see, these ferries are massive. We're moving already. We haven't even made it to the elevator. That's fast. And you are required to wear masks while on board. Even though this is the smallest of the ferries that you can take, it's still a big one. This is the smallest one we've ever taken. Yeah, the smallest one we've ever taken. This is where you can get you some lunch or breakfast here. Um, we are moving along. So, breakfast. And you get your snacks, salads, coffee, drinks. It's fantastic. Okay, we're going to go for the all aboard breakfast. You can pick your two meats, scrambled egg or fried egg, and hash browns, and I think we get toast with it too. Yeah, I got Canadian bacon last time. Yeah. But it just turned out to be ham. <laughs> and there we go. We're ready. All aboard breakfast. This is the all aboard breakfast. You get two, your choice of two meats, 
with potatoes and scrambled eggs. And you get to sit back here in this awesome area where you can watch all the water go by. And it's a beautiful day. The rain has stopped. I think we're gonna do have a really nice sailing over. About two hours. You can come back here and if it's a lovely day, you can sit back here. Okay, let's go explore the ship. They have um, plenty of information for the island, things to do, the maps all over the place. Okay, this is the front area of the ferry. There's plenty of seating here. And you can watch where you're going. And they have a gift shop. Yep, this is what transport bandits do when we're on the ferry and we're bored. We come to the gift shop and play. Look at Jeff. He's a natural captain. Yeah, it's captain of you. And I have a puffin. This is, no, this is an orca, not a puffin. Come on. Hello, Mr. Dimples. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stop goofing off. If you get one of these, you're just going to want to eat more and more and more. So they're washing the RV and the appraiser is out there inspecting it and it should be fine. Okay, we've made our delivery on Vancouver Island. We're not going to fool around on Vancouver Island. We're going to head right back to the ferry. Yeah, because we got to get down to Pendleton and get another load. Obviously, I'm driving. What does that have to do with anything? Well, I'm not talking as much. I'm driving. Oh. Every single video we've ever made, you're driving because Jeff doesn't do the video when I'm driving. So that's how it goes. But in any case, we should make it back on the ferry here at about 5 o'clock. We're here at the terminal. Okay, so there's Gus. He's waiting in lane 18 for the ferry. We're gonna walk up here to the ferry terminal. They have like a market center in there. So um, we're gonna go check that out. So let's see what they've got inside there. Our sailing is at 545. So it's like 445 now. So we got an hour. We got an hour. Let's check it out. That should be just enough time for me to walk down there and get back to the truck. <laughs> it's a long way. Alright, so this one isn't near as big as Tawasan. You can get your drinks here or some snacks. They have a roast co coyote's coffee. And then they also have what I got was one of these, it's the, N I don't see if you can see that, hold on. That's the Nanaimo bar, those are delicious. If you like Boston cream pie, think that when you see that. And I think you can get uh, sandwiches and some snacks. That's all they have here, but they have a big ferry terminal. It's like a, got, has a, a market and everything there at Tawasan. So um, we will try that on the next run up here. All right, let's go back to the truck. Okay, so we're back in the truck. I and you know we bring you very important information. This is a Nanaimo bar. 
It is named after the city that we're in right now, Nanaimo, British Columbia, on Vancouver Island. It consists of a nutty walnut almond pecan chocolate crunchy layer. This is a layer of frozen custard. Think Boston cream pie. And this is chocolate ganache on top. So this is their um, town specialty, and it's delicious. It is. It really is. I'm going to eat it right now. You can't have any. Sorry, unless you come here. Mr. Bones, he looks worn out, buddy. Sit up there straight, boy. There you go. Ooh, that looks tight. But we're going to make it. It's really tight. It's like 6'8", and we're like, what, 6'6"? Six, six? Yeah. We got two inches clearance of the top of the truck. Watch your mirrors, Jeff. We are here on the ferry. What you got there, buddy? Uh, chicken alfredo. And cheesecake. And a cheesecake. And we will look for krakens. We're back in the truck and we are getting ready to pull off of the ferry and head to the border in Blaine, Washington. It should be about a 15 minute drive, I think. And then we'll head just on the other side to Bellingham, Washington to stay the night. And we have made it back to the Lumi Bay Travel Plaza where our friend Chris is waiting for us without a load because he delivered earlier today to Vancouver Island and then just came on back. That's Chris right there in the black truck. And uh, this is where we're going to hang out tonight and head to Pendleton tomorrow. I'm going to tell you what the figures are on that motorhome or drive away unit because a lot of people think that drive-away units won't make you any money, okay? Right, and the short runs won't. No, the short runs on motorhomes you gotta watch out for because that could eat it with the fuel prices and the pull-out fee. You gotta watch what you're getting paid per mile. You wanna do the longer miles to make it really worth it for the drive-away units, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, You though. know, if you've got somebody going with you you know, you can run three or four hundred miles and it'll be fine mm -hmm. if it's along your route and it's along your route so and they pick you up. Yeah, like I do with Jeff. If you are a team driver and you're thinking about signing up with Synergy as a husband and wife team or a partner team, if you can get a motor home going the same route as your partner is going, then you don't have to worry about your you're towing a car behind your motor home. Right. You don't have to worry about catching a bus or transportation to get or back to Goshen. Airplane. Negotiate, or airplane. I don't know how they do it when they buy airplane tickets. I don't either. I have no idea how that works. Well, anyway, let's get back to the figures. On the motorhome, uh, that Class C motorhome, a 28 foot Class C, I could go about 300 miles on a tank of gas. It held about 50 gallons of gas at a time. Well, I got paid. Um, 
a dollar ten per mile for 2,299 miles. That went from uh, Elkhart, Indiana to Delta, British Columbia, right, right there at Vancouver. Paid $2,528.90. The fuel that I spent on the way out, my fuel expenses were $1,113.77. That's a lot of fuel. That's a lot of ex fuel expense. However, I was able to profit just by taking that motor home $1,415.13. So that pays for all of Jeff's uh, fuel as well. That paid for my fuel, that pays for all of just fuel or and more. Yeah, we get to keep all the profit off of my run. So we get to keep that $5,000 profit to, on Jeff's run. So but, it really is worth it. Right, but now that the gasoline is so much more expensive. Yeah, I've got to really keep an eye on that. Yeah, we got to really keep an eye on that. Because fuel is going through the roof and it jumped up this week. Yeah, like four. Because of the whole Russia Ukraine scenario. God bless Ukraine. And uh, that's causing our fuel prices to skyrocket. And because of the unspeakable idiots we have in Washington. <laughs> well, tell us how you really feel. Because, uh, yeah, the, uh, our administration really needs some work. I'll just say that. And um, so it was a profitable run because I'm coming away with $1,415 in my pocket. And that's it for the motorized figures. Here's the breakdown of Jeff's unit that we just delivered. He got paid $1.88, which is the normal rate at the current time. We just had a rate increase, so he'll, next time he brings one out here, it will be more. But uh, at $1.88 was the, the normal rate. It wasn't a hot or an old load. It's a normal load. $1.88 for 2,500 miles. Um, he got paid $4,700. And then you had your $300 dealership incentive right. uh, for being an excellent driver. And um, so $5,000 is basically what that load got us. I think it cost me probably fourteen fifteen hundred in diesel okay so that's a pretty good profit there so now we're headed back down to Pendleton to pick up another one to take to that dealer dealership where they will award you an extra three hundred dollars for bringing it to them yeah and I need that money because on top of my normal expenses I've got to have a stake account Oh yeah, you do need a steak account. <laughs> right, so I spent like 60 bucks on steak, probably $40 on tacos, <laughs> tacos. you know, $20, $30 on barbecue. <laughs> anyway, let's head down to Pendleton and hook up our next load.